Hey Royal Family, coming at you today with the overhead view. Now today we're asking, who is in the air about you? The first tarot deck is the Divine Dreams, or sorry, Divine Vision Tarot um, by Emma Zhang and that um, chameleon brooch there. The second tarot deck is the, I don't know, <laughs> can't remember, sorry, Dream of the Nile Tarot, also by Emma Zhang, and then the third, with that bumblebee, and then the third deck with the butterfly is um, the Star Child um, Tarot. So do your thing, pick your pile. I'll go to the intro to show you the boxes because sometimes that's helpful in picking the pile as well. Okay, see you in a bit. Royal family, welcome again to your reading. And I'm going to show you the boxes just in case that's helpful. So as I said, today we are asking um, who is in their air? Who is talking to them about you? Okay, um, so the first one is the Dream Vision Tarot. And we have this chameleon. Could be any goner. I think it's a chameleon. Right, we have this chameleon here. The second pile is Dreams of the Nile Tarot. And I, what I really like about this is opens like a little sarcophagus. 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 And this bumblebee. And we have the Star Child Tarot and this butterfly. So do your thing, pick your pile, and I'm going to be right back with your reading. Hey, Pile One, if you chose the Divine Visions Tarot, this is going to be your reading. All right, so how we're going to do this reading? First, we are going to identify how many people are in your person's ear um, about you. And we are going to find out their energy towards you. Um, look at their energy generally and then look at the message that they're giving your person. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is identify how many people um, are in your person's ear. And I have my fa handy dandy um, pendulum chart here with numbers. So we're going to see how many people are talking to your person about you. All right, let's see how many people I'm talking to. Okay, we have six people. Six people talking to Power One's person. So let me write that down. Okay. So what we're going to do now, um, let's get sig some significators for your person's energy towards you. Just in case you can't make it to the extended, because in the extended, um, besides finishing up the rest, I'm going to do the first 25 minutes um, in the public because I like my videos to be uh, just around that 25 area mark because that's when the majority of people stay on to watch the reading, right? So I'll do the first 25 minutes as a public reading and then I'll take the rest to the extended. So in the extended, we will finish off the rest of names and then I'll also look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you. But just in case you can't make it to the extended, let's get some significators for the energy towards you, which will sh which should give you a fair idea, okay? And some people like longer readings than the 25 and some people like shorter readings than the 25. But by by and large, um, the average seems to be just around that 25 minute mark um, to keep people fully engaged. All right, so let's have a look. We have the fixer. This person wants to fix it. Um, they perceive that they have done something to sabotage this connection, to sabotage themselves, um, to hurt you, um, and they want to fix it, right? Um, and they're fixing it after 
getting some insight into card number 39. And 39 reduces to 12. And 12 um, is all about that higher perspective. Okay? So they've gotten the higher perspective. They've seen, they've walked a man in your shoes. They've seen both sides of the story. And now they want to fix this. They've, they've, um, it spilled milk, but they still want to fix it. Okay? Energy generally. We have the returning. They want to come back. Baby, come back. <laughs> they want to come back. Um, they may have turned their back on you in the past. But there is an awakening, it looks like, that they went through. And now they're understanding your point of view um, just a little bit better. Maybe in the past they were pretty closed off, especially to things like divine love and spirituality, that kind of thing. And it's because their third eye was um, restricted, okay? But now they are coming back and now they can truly see the beauty in your uniqueness, in the beauty of your your belief system. Um, and they want to make a tap back. We call that a tap back in the Caribbean. <laughs> they want to make a tap back. All right, let's see. I mean, and that's the energy generally. Let's see the energy towards you. Generally, it's also someone who is returning to a place of equilibrium and balance, okay? They may have lost themselves for a little while. So it's a return to self. Underneath the deck, we have shame, tenderness. So they are embarrassed by the way they would have acted in the past. We have another 11 here. So we have 11, 11. Some of you guys may um, identify with being twin flames, but this is someone who feels like they have wronged you, they've hurt you, um, and they're not really sure how to get over that feeling of shame and embarrassment. We have gifts to the portal. Okay, so they may want to reach out and give you a gift, but this feels like almost like um, ancestor veneration or something like that, or giving an offering to the earth and nature and offering to benevolent beings. They are basically begging the universe to, to bring you back into their life. To bring you back into their life, that's what I get. I'm also getting as well that they're also able to appreciate you now because they may be coming out of a horrible experience, okay? It could be that you might have been, you know, really investing in this connection, blood, sweat, and tears into this connection. This person wasn't paying you any attention. Maybe they were giving um, to another person. So just as you were giving to some them and perhaps not getting it returned in full measure, they were also giving to something else and not getting that return in full measure as well, right? So you guys were both giving your giving your pearls to swine, right? G giving your, your better, your... Giving all, anyway, giving all your energy to, to like avoid, avoid just, just a space where that just sucked all your energy and just, just never reciprocated. And there's absolutely nothing that can be sustained on a one way street except maybe traffic, right? Well, no relationship. None, 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 none can be sustained by the person just giving, 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 right? The flow of abundance, the flow of life is about giving and receiving. Once one of these functions stop, everything halts. Everything halts, right? And it dies. So it looks like that's what they're realizing. They're now seeing how much you gave to them because they've experienced it um, themselves, okay? All right, now let's look at who is in the air about you. So we already know it's six people. Let's have the first person. 
let's get from somewhere at the bottom of the deck where I can't see. All right, who is this first person? Who is in there? Hmm? We have friends in quotation marks. So we know this is frenemies. All right, so let's see these frenemies um, and let's see what they're saying um, about you. Good Lord. One, give me one second, guys. There's a deck I was supposed to pull out that I didn't. One second. Thanks for your patience, Power One. It is the Oracle of the Radiant Sun that I wanted to pull out. All right, so let's have a look. All right. These friends. These friends that your person has here. We'll get a significator for the energy generally. And then a significator for the energy towards you. We have enthusiasm. Okay. So maybe they really like you. We have the nine um, um, of cup. It looks like the nine of pentacles here. But we also have criticism right after. So maybe they're enthusiastic about their criticism about you. Let's have a look. All right. Their energy generally, generally, as a collective, we have adaptability. So they're fickle. That's what I get here. They're fickle. That friends, frenemies, they're fickle, right? So as the wind blows, however, they can score points. Um, with your person, however, they can score points with the public eye. They're not people who have uh, scruples or, you know, like core values. Everything is changeable depending on how much they can score points um, with your person or how they're able to manipulate or control a person so that they can benefit, okay? So these are, you know, what my grandmother used to call fair weather friends. Nobody can depend on They're only here for a good time, not a long time. As soon as the good time stop rolling, um, they disappear. Their energy towards you. Let's see if they have better energy towards you. We have discovery. All right, so... They are doing some research on your end because um, they're not getting anything um, about you in terms of maybe on your social media or anything like that. They're not getting proper insights as to who they are. So maybe they're doing a more deep dive. For some of you, this they may uh, be retaining a private eye or they might be doing deeper searches on the internet. We, we do have the world. Yeah, an arrow pointing there. They might be doing deeper searches on the internet, but they're looking to find some kind of dirt on you that's going to kill this relationship, right? They're looking to find some dirt on you that's going to kill this relationship. Let's ask Spirit. Sometimes you have to go with the flow. Um, let's ask Spirit why they want to do that. <laughs> why do you want to kill this relationship? We have indecision they, they can't get a read on you okay they don't know what you are are you light or dark an angel or demon they they, they don't know they can't get a read um on you and anything that they don't know scares this group of friends right Anything that they don't know has to be bad or evil. It's that kind of mentality. Things need to be black or white. They can't be complex. Anything that is complex, that has to be something devilish, demonic, bad, that kind of thing, right? It's not people that can appreciate complexity. So let's see what they are telling your person um, about you. So we have some fair weather friends. They're not sure who you are. They can't get a read on you. They're not getting enough information um, on the internet. They can't make up their mind about you. What are they telling your person? We have the nine of cups. Um, and that's the dream come true card. But nine of cups, people can interpret it to mean um, egotistical, you know. Let's see what they're telling their person about you. 
we have the hanged man in reverse. We have the queen of wands in reverse. And that's a karmic energy. Um, the queen of wands in reverse, she is... Um, she may use her spirituality to control people, like maybe doing spells and that kind of thing. Um, she is sexually exploitative, may use her sex appeal to, again, control or dominate others. Um, she got anger issues. She has very limited um, self-control, um, very vindictive. We have Knight of Pentacles in reverse. That's someone who is paranoid. That's also the card of the the neurotic and um having mental untreated mental health issues. Being unstable. Um and we have the Emperor. Okay. What are they telling people? Um what are they telling your person? about you i think there it's a mixed bag okay they really have not decided exactly who you are they're not they're not getting insight we have the hangman in reverse right and the hangman is about insight and it's in reverse so they're not getting any insight as to who you are but the predominant energy is that you're someone who might be desperate um, that you're someone who is unbalanced, you're so, and they might even say you're crazy. That might be, that might be the word, crazy, unhinged. Um, they may think that you um have done some kind of binding magic on your person. Um, you're trying to control your person. Um, through sex, they might accuse your person of being, you know, pussy whipped or or being or digmatized or something like that. Um, they may see they they what they will acknowledge is that you're a boss. They see that you're a boss, right? Whatever they're seeing on the internet, they see that you are in charge of your life. You might be making money, you might be at the top of your game, they see you as a boss. But at the same time, there is something about you that has them uneasy. They just can't put their finger on it. But I truly believe it's, it's just that you're different. You're different to their group. You're different to their tribe. And they, they, they don't understand, as I said, they don't understand complexity. It's an immature set of people where everything is either black or white. You're either good or you're evil. Or you're good or you're bad, right? There's no... um. They, they, they think in polarities. There's no in-between an allowance for the complexities of what a human being is. Judgmental bitches. <laughs> Let's see what else is in your person's air about you. Right, let me go let me go deep. Okay. Alright, we have a female ancestor. Listen. Um I think if you watch my other channel, go on my my channel, Made for Love. I put out a reading. Uh, would have been Friday, the first of March, two thousand and twenty-four. Um, I'm not sure if it's. It might be the public version or the, the extended version of the reading, but this female ancestor, generations five to eight. Um, came forward. Yep. This female ancestor here. Um, so it's, you're looking at great, 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 great grandmother and beyond, going back. All right, let's see the energy towards you. In that reading, that great grandmother had positive things to say. That great, great, great grandmother had positive things to say. So this their this is their female ancestor, their female ancestor. Let's look at their energy generally. We have discrimination. Now, um, this could mean discernment, okay, that they're discerning, but it could be that 
And it could be that they are discerning because they may have faced discrimination in their lifetime and they know what it's like to be judged. Or it could be that they may have been very begotted in their time. Okay, so there's, that's something that we need to um, look at. There are a lot of butterflies here, though. I'm always hopeful when I see butterflies. The energy towards you. We have status. Okay, so they see you guys together as a power couple. Okay, a power couple. Um, they could have been like elitist in their time. Okay, so they approve of you because there's something about you that they think is going to boost your person's status, your boost your person's way, or, or you know, make your person more upwardly mobile in terms of um, their class or something like that. So there's something about you that they do approve of, even if they don't approve of other things. All right, let's see what they're telling your person about you. So they're communicating with your person through, you know, dreams, visions, intuitive hits. We have Hermit. We have the King of Swords. Reverse. And here's my overt narcissist card. We have the three of pentacles in reverse. I don't get that with this though. Not next to the, herm the hermit. And we have the magician in reverse. I'm going to pull another card, a magician, because magician in reverse can be a master manipulator. Nine of wands in reverse. No, this is a non-action card. All right, that's a card of do not take action. All right, so what am I getting here? Um, your ancestor, no, not your ancestor, their ancestor, right? Their ancestor is telling them, like, this is not time to make any moves towards power one. It looks like for some of you, there's either a third party here or there's a work situation that your person needs to bring closure to, okay? Their ancestor is telling them, um, take time to be alone by yourself um in stillness now is not time to be having any big conversations with power one you need to figure out what you want um and to do that you have to go deep within you have to go on that journey of self-discovery right instead of using power one as a distraction so they're telling they're telling power one do not take any action right now this is a time to be alone to learn how to live alone so that you're not using power one just for their company or for their energy. You have to be self-sustaining on your own. You have to make sure that you're powerful within your own self so that you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with power one. Okay? All right. Let's see who else is in your person's ear about you. Let's get it from the bottom here. Oh, something fall fell. We have a partner. Okay, let's see if this is an intimate partner or a business partner. Or like a partner in terms of their mate, like a friend. Um, Is this an intimate partner or... Okay, let's... Is an intimate partner, a business partner, or a friend? It's a friend. Okay. All right. Let's see what this friend is saying. Let's get um, a significator for this friend's energy generally. We have riches, okay? So this person may be a high achiever. They feel like they've made it, especially in the material world. They may think that they are above other persons. 
Um, it's someone who might be wielding a lot of power. They may have a lot of influence um, over your person because of their success. This person's energy towards you. Protection. Protect them at all costs, right? Um, they think that you are a treasure, right? And that's what they may say. They may say to your person, this, you have a treasure and you need to protect it. Protect it at all costs, okay? Um, and there's a one here. Protect power one at all costs. Okay, so this friend might be halfway in love with you because they think that you are the complete package. They see your feminine side, nurturing, soft, loving, receptive, deeply spiritual, and intuitive. But they also think that you're fierce, fiercely protective. You're a go-getter. You are at the top of the food chain um, in terms of your career. And they love that blend. I think this friend is in love with you. I think this friend is in love with you because they think that you are the prize. Let's see what they're telling your person about you at this time. We have page of pentacles in reverse. We have the four of swords. I, it feels like the same message the ancestor was telling your person. We have the eight of pentacles. And we have the Ace of Wands in reverse. I, I think it is the same message that the ancestor um, was telling your person. They're on the same page. Okay. So they're telling your person, no, now is not time to reach out. And now is not time to invest in this connection. Now is time to heal. So I really think your person might be coming out of something else. It might be a bad breakup. It might be a horrible job situation where they felt incredibly burnt out, where they may have felt used or exploited. Okay, so they're telling your person, now is not time to make any moves towards part one. Now it's time to really nourish yourself, to recover, to work hard on yourself, on your wounding, maybe to even work hard maybe at their job so that they can really be proud um, of their accomplishments and their sense of self, right? So that is... Um, their advice to your person okay so we're going to take this to the extended but before we do let's get some advice from spirit for you so in the extended we're going to look at the other three people that want to come through we're going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you and then we're going to look at what's going to be their next actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading but let's get some advice for you first all right so this hardship deck is so cute but so difficult to, sh to shuffle right it's a good idea but mm, it doesn't help that the stock is very thick um as well We got one. Amen. Um, and this is um, the artwork. And as you can see, it's a solitary figure. Okay. So maybe the advice is also for you um, to work on yourself at this time. Let's see. It says, don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do. For it is only in being true to yourself that you can be true to others. So Spirit is saying, right now, you also have to take a time out, right? Um, and really focus on what you want, okay? And in order to find what we want, we first have to figure out what we are, okay? Our beliefs, our core values, um, how we see ourselves as a spiritual being, how we see our place in the world, in our family, that kind of thing. So there's some soul searching that you too um, 
have to end up, have to partake in. And when you figure out who you are, then you can be true to that. So then we want to know what are authentic experiences to you? And is your person offering you an avenue where you can be true to yourself, where you can honor yourself, where you can honor your beliefs? And if they're not, especially if they're not at this time, then you know what you need to do. Take a step back. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So I'll continue this in the extended Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Could you please subscribe to the channel if you can or put a comment down below. It could be the date that you watched this reading, the pal that you chose. You could put an emoji. You could put a full stop. The algorithm doesn't care. Right? Um, and if you're able to interact with any of the ads that may have played during this reading, right, that would be beautiful energy exchange for me. And please do it for any creator that you enjoy because it keeps us independent right here where we want to be okay take care bye hey pal two if you chose the dream of the now tarot this is going to be your reading all right so what we're going to do now we're asking um who's in the air about you right so the first thing we're going to do is determine how many people are in the air about you then we're going to magic calabash and pick from magic calabash one by one and see who these people are. Now, I will do the first 25 minutes of the reading. Because that's I aim to be just like 25 to 30 minutes. Because on average, it looks like that is the watch, ta watch, watch time that people most enjoy. I mean, some people do like shorter ones. And some people do like longer ones. But that seems to be um, the mean there. I'll do the first 25 minutes um, in public. And then I will take it to the extended. Okay? In the extended, we'll look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you. And, of course, we will do the rest um, of um, the names. Okay? All right. So, the first thing we want to do is figure out how many people are in your person's air about you. So, I have my handy-dandy pendulum chart here. Um, so, let's look and see how many people are in your person's air. Okay? Spirit, how many people are in um, pile three person's air? Nine, good lord. What the peep? Pal two. Nine people. Jeez, on ages. Why are your person listening to all these people? Why are they allowing people to even give their opinions? Anyways. Let's have a look and see what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do, just in case you can't make it to the extended, I'm going to pull some significators for your person's energy towards you. Um, and that might give you some idea of how they're thinking and feeling about you at this time. So we'll start with creating a baseline. And we're going to look at your person's energy generally. And then we'll pull a card for their energy towards you. We have the juggler. Mm -mm. It looks like you may have encountered a player. Okay, someone who was juggling um, a lot of situations. Maybe you, somebody else, or might have been multiple people. This might be also the energy of a multitasker. That Maybe they do have a lot on their plate. Maybe um, the financial responsibilities of their household, if they have a household, um, may rest solely on them. Or they might have a lot of investments going. Okay, um... Uh, maybe they may have many companies or, or something like that, but it's someone who is spread really thin. Um, it looks like in terms of their time, energy, and their effort, okay? All right, so their energy generally. We have in two minds, oh my all right, so this is a person, and this is just generally, but I feel like it's in love because it's a card number 51, right? Um, and that reduces to six, which is the lovers. So it feels like maybe they're in two minds about love and relationships. Maybe they have two connections going on. Um, maybe they are torn between what their family says. We have card number five, which represents family. 
um, and and what their family says and and a, and a fresh start, okay, with that that number one. So it's someone who feels conflicted, and because they're conflicted, they are immobilized. They're immobilized, you know. They're immobilized. They don't know what to do. They're very worried, um, because it feels like they're being pressured to make a move. Whether it's you that's pressuring them or the other situation that's pressuring them or their job, whatever it is um, that's applying the pressure, they feel like if they don't make a move soon, that everything here is going to explode or implode um, and they're going to lose both situations. What's a job, or whatever it is. But they're in two minds deeply conflicted so as a person who feels like you know they're torn in two you know what do they do they're torn in two what do they do um five also represents contracts so Maybe they're in some sort of contract. As I said, could be a work situation. Um, could be a marriage even. All right. Energy underneath the deck. Um, card number 38, which reduces, which reduces to 11. We have on the inside looking out. So it feels like this person is kind of restricted. Okay. There's this whole new world, this vast universe out there. And they're only occupying this tiny corner of it. They're keeping themselves small. Um, and they're wishing for more. But some part of them feels like they can't have this more that they're wishing for. <laughs> Maybe this person um, what writes poetry or music or something like that. Their energy towards you. It's like they're looking on and you're living your best life, you know. Fear that the light will bring judgment. So they're afraid of what other people will say. They're afraid of what the truth will do um, in their life. Because the truth, yeah, certainly it illuminates. Certainly it leads us to our true self. But the truth can temporarily hurt people's feelings. The truth can cause... Um, drama in a family, <laughs> drama in a situation. Um, and the truth, it looks like in their world, may bring judgment and criticism. Because maybe in their world, you're not allowed to be yourself. I remember we had that outside looking, inside looking out card. Maybe a person is in the closet about something. Um, could be their sexuality, could be their spiritual or political or even political beliefs because political beliefs these days will get you in hot water. Maybe their political beliefs, maybe um, their creativity and what they want to do with their life, their aspirations for their life. Maybe there's something, maybe something sexually, I don't know. There's something that they don't want the world to know. And we are entitled to our privacy. But it feels like in order to come towards you, there's part of that secret self that they would need to re to reveal and they're not ready for people's judgment. Um, it could be that they might be in a public eye in some way or they live in a small place like me, right? You're, you're on a small island where everybody is either a family or they, or they know you anyways, right? They may be in a small community where everybody knows them and where they... Maybe their their family is in the public eye or their family um, enjoys some kind of prestige and they feel they have to to a certain line um, in order to exist in this space. So there's also that. So there's something about them coming out or moving towards you that means that they have to show their truths and for some reason they think that their truths are going to bring um, the criticism the gossip of others. And it, this is what's making them hesitate. I don't think it's how they feel about you. Um, it, it is the judgment of others. This person has a deep need 
to be accepted. Okay. All right. So let's see. You know, we have nine people here. And, and maybe that's why everybody feels like they are entitled to give the, your person their opinion because they know that your person gives a shit. <laughs> My friends and family know me. They wouldn't come to me with that bull. Unless I ask for your opinion, you don't give it. They know that already. I've already set that boundary. And perhaps your person, um, their problem may be boundary setting. So everybody feels entitled to approach this person with their opinion. Anyways, um, let's see who's the first person that's all up in your person's business. Okay, who this? <laughs> okay, we have a side piece. <laughs> okay. So there's a side piece that is all up in your person's business. Um, so it looks like your person has somebody else. Or it looks like your person might be married and they might be um, also courting you and somebody else. So there's a side piece um, that's coming through. Let's see what the side piece is saying. All right. First, we're going to get um, significators for the side piece. So this person might not be in two minds. They might be in three minds. <laughs> oh, my God. So maybe they're torn between the way of their family. Maybe that's something that they learned. Okay. To be juggling all over the bloody place. Right. So maybe they're torn between the way of their family um, and doing something new, doing something different. Right. Underneath the deck, we have a restlessness, okay? So this side piece here is a, is a busy body. Busy body, all up in people's business. And um, maybe they're getting fed up with sharing your person. So it's a third party coming through. All right. Let's see. Um, this person's energy generally. Generally, it's someone who likes harmony, Okay. They love to get around with others and maybe for a long time they did not rock the boat with this person and whatever relationship they're enjoying. Maybe they, they you know, stay within their little boundary. Um, they knew their role, played their part, but now it looks like they might be wanting something else. The energy towards you. We have drama. They're... They, <laughs> they're ready to bring it on <laughs> they are ready to bring it on guys okay they're ready to bring the drama to you right okay they are getting fed up of the whole thing and they're ready to start something <laughs> oh my gosh okay let's see what they're telling your person about you oh. pal to your spicy you're spicy. This is a spicy reading. Underneath the deck, we have the labyrinth. Trying to figure out how do they get out of where they put themselves. That's what your person is trying to figure out. What are they telling your person? The, dra the drama, king or queen or they? All right. Why, am I, why did I use this deck there? Anyway, it says afraid of the attic. So this is someone who is kind of stuck in their ways and they're not interested, uh, interested in ascension. They're also afraid that your person might level up and leave them in this connection, which is why they're pressing your person at this time. They feel like your person is moving on. There's something about your person um, that has changed. Um, we have 
flow in reverse and it's a card temperance in reverse so it feels like this person here um, is a bit unhinged or there might be a lot of things happening in your person's life all at once okay so we have the king of pentacles in reverse and that's you know that's a gold digger card someone who is very materialistic but it's also someone who is very jealous and possessive we have the king of swords in reverse um, and that's someone who that's the overt narcissist we have the two of wands no sorry the six of wands in reverse sorry and we have the four of pentacles in reverse well they're basically telling your person they need to make a choice the tenure person they need to make a choice and and they are coming they're saying this from a place of you know trying to protect their material assets assets like what the material things that they get from this person but they're also very jealous and very possessive um there's nothing that they won't do to keep your person in their life they don't like to lose this is a sore loser six of wands in reverse they're a sore loser, so they're telling your person, they got to let you go. They have to let you go. They have to stop talking to you. They have to stop investing in this connection. It's, they have to stop, you know, showing up for you in this connection. That they have to make a choice. It's now or never. They may even be threatening your person. Um, if you If you won't do it, I will. So they may even want to reach out to you to stir some stuff up. Let's see who else is coming out of the woodworks pile too. And maybe it could be a committed partner, but now they feel like the side piece. There is that. All right, we got a sister in the mix. So some interference from family here. So if your person doesn't have a sister, it could be someone that they consider to be a, a sister either way a platonic female energy coming through let's see the energy generally we have birth okay so it feels like this person's very much um involved with the family may they may even view your person as maybe as one of their children okay Maybe it's a big sister like me. <laughs> um, and they can, you know, we can be interfering and protective. Maybe they're very protective um, of their person. Um, this sister could be pregnant at this time. But it's someone, it, it feels, this feels like a protective energy, right? Um, they're very protective of your person and they're very protective of family generally. Let's see the energy towards you. We have enterprise. I need another card on that. They may do. They may see you as someone who is enterprising, a business person, someone who is abundant. Maybe there's something that's also spiritual about you. We have these palmistry um, symbols here as well. As a card number one, so it feels like an Ace of Pentacles card. So they may view you as a good catch. I need. I need to clarify. And we have impulsiveness. And also a card number one. So they might be telling your person um, that right now, or, or they may view you as impulsive, um, spontaneous. So they may be telling your person to be cautious, okay? Because they see you as someone like, very changeable, right? Very mutable um, and maybe unreliable also, okay? All right, let's see what they're telling you. Oh, good Lord. We have Goddess of Air. That's beautiful for our first card. And that is the Queen of Air, Queen of Swords. We have 
three. Lord, what is this? Looks like three of pentacles. Three of pentacles in reverse. Four of wands in reverse. And the star in reverse. Okay. All right. What are they saying? Um, They're saying that, well, they see you as a good communicator. They see you as someone who has awesome boundaries. But they're, they're also telling a person that they need to set some boundaries with you. And they also need to set some boundaries in their life. They're telling a person that they need to speak their truth. And it looks like there might be a third party that they need to speak that truth to. They're telling a person before you speak your truth to pal too, um, there is a third party that you need to disconnect from. We have three of pentacles in reverse here and we have the four of wands in reverse here. So they might be even telling your person that you need to get a divorce or separation or breakup with this other person before you come to pal too. Okay. They're also telling a person um, that they also need time um, to heal from whatever other relationship that might be here because it looks like there's another relationship. Okay. So they're asking a person to be as communicative as possible to everybody that is involved here. Okay. All right. Let's let's go and get another. I think because you have so many, I'm going to do four um, persons in this public reading. Who's the next person that's coming through? A male influential figure. So this could be a dad, um, uh, a mentor, father figure. Um, a friend, but someone who is male and who your person respects. What are they coming forward to say? We have power. So this is the energy generally, right? Um, it might be that they are, they feel like powerful within themselves. This also seems like someone who is balanced. We have the sun um, and the moon here. So it might be someone who is very balanced in their energies. And because they're balanced in the energies, they can appreciate both sides of the fence. The energy towards you. We have optimism. So they like you, right? They like you. Um, and we do have the chariot here. So they do think that if your person moves far with you, that they're going to be happy. We have the three of cups underneath as the underlying energy in that card. Let's see what they're telling a person. What's the advice that they're giving? We have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. It feels like the advice from the sister. We have the Six of Cups in reverse. Justice in reverse. It's a card of karma. And the page of cups in reverse. Or what are the, yes, the page of cups in reverse. So what are they telling your person? They're telling your person now is not time to declare your love to Pal 2. Now it's time to be open and honest to a karmic energy in their life. So it looks like for this part, there's definitely a third party. There's somebody else here. Um, because we have the six of cups in reverse, which is a karmic soulmate. 
okay so it looks like they're telling your person that you have to break up get a divorce from or end things with this karmic soulmate okay yes yeah, karma two cards of karma this karmic soulmate before you say anything to pal two so they're basically saying you need to close one door before you open the other one which is pretty sound advice let's see who else is in your person there gosh i'm gonna put these back i've one in my hand already we have a pro so this is a professional so this could be um a therapist this could be someone um legal fraternity this could be a doctor um but it's some professional and it could be somebody that they work with um as well let's see this person's energy we have protection so um, it looks like they want to protect your person, whether it's from financial ruin, whether it's from prying eyes, wagging tongues. Okay, it's someone who is very family oriented. Um, it's someone who, um, again, very protective. I see that very protective. That's who they are naturally. Um, a warrior, a fighter. The energy towards you. We have achievement. They see you as a high achiever and they may also see you as a prize, right? This person sees you as a prize, all right? What are they telling your person? What's the advice that they're giving your person at this time? We have King of Swords in reverse. We have, what is this? Looks like the emperor. No. Figure it out when when the rest of the cards come out. It feels like the Emperor. Though. Um, two of Cups in reverse. And Fortune. Okay. Let me see if there's an Emperor in this deck. second guys I'm trying to figure out what that card is no there's an emperor in the deck so that might be four of pentacles in reverse okay so what are they telling your person all right it looks like your person has someone who has a lot of narcissistic tendencies in their life we have the king of swords in reverse which is the overt narcissist okay and they're telling a person that they need to release that energy before they even think about coming towards you so it looks like they're getting pretty consistent advice okay um that they have to release that energy close off that cycle um before they make any move towards you or they would just be sabotaging um this connection that's what they're telling a person they're telling your person you have a, still have a lot of loose ends. You need to tie up those loose ends before you even think about moving towards pile two. Okay. So I'm going to take this now to the extended. We're going to go get the other five people. <laughs> and then we're going to look at your person's um, thoughts and feelings for you. And then we'll look at what's going to be their next actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. 
can i ask you to subscribe to the channel please like the video you can put a comment down below you can put the date that you watch this reading or the pile that you chose or you can put a heart you can put a full stop um it all helps with the algorithm and if you can interact with any of the ads that may have played during this reading it's also a beautiful energy exchange for me thank you all right let's see what's the advice here they're hard to shuffle really difficult oh my all right we got three oh, i'll take them okay so the first one is this and this is like you know thanking the ancestors it looks like because every time i see trees trees about family right um and there is this tree that's healing so what does it says it says give thanks for the blessings of love soon to come your way know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires so spirit is saying listen um true love is coming your way the whether it's with this person or somebody else okay because you deserve it and you're not to settle for anything less it doesn't matter if this person you feel this person your soulmate your twin flame it doesn't matter if they're not treating you well um then you need to walk away from that situation um we have this card and it says sexual union honor the place in one another where you are one eternal soul for there you are flying true bliss so it looks like spirit is saying um there may be a lot of strong sexual energy that might tempt you into uh, compromising your beliefs, your principles. Spirit says that you can honor that energy in the 5D, uh, maybe through fantasy, through, um, you know, sex magic, whatever it is. Um, and you can have that there, but... And that might be a way to honor the sexual energy. But if your person is not doing the things that you need them to do to, to make you feel loved by them, um, and they're not doing things that are in alignment with your soul and your, your core beliefs, then you just need to leave that behind. And then we have this card. And it says, deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. So you already know what to do. Do what feels right. Do what makes you feel free. Do what makes you feel the most joy. Less anxiety. Whatever that is. All right. I'm a love. So that was your reading. I hope that was helpful. Take care. Bye. Hey, pal three. If they chose the Star Child Tarot. And this beautiful butterfly, this is going to be your reading. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this reading. I have here with me my trusty little pendulum chart. And what we're going to determine is first, how many people are in your person's ear about you? And then, one by one, systematically, we're going to Magic Calabash. See who these people are. See what's their, gen their energy generally and what's their energy towards you. And then, we're going to see what they're telling your person about you. Whether it's advice, instruction, ultimatum, we're going to find out. Okay? So, let's go. All right. So, let's see. Spirit. How many people are in pals? Three. Okay, so there are seven people. Seven people in your person's ear. I'm going to write that down. So when I start channel, I'll just forget. Pal three. Seven. All right. So we're going to begin the reading by getting some significators for your person's energy generally and towards you. And what I'll be doing is doing the first 25 minutes to half an hour of the reading in public because that is the average 
watch time. And then um, I will take it over to the extended. And in the extended, we'll finish the names. And we will also look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you. And then next actions towards you, okay? So underneath the deck, we have the maiden. <clears throat> so this is how they see you. Um, they see you as beautiful. They see you as innocent, as open. She also has a wand in her hand. <laughs> so there's this kind of duality to you where yet you're deeply spiritual. They think you're magical. But at the same time, you have a deep um, sex appeal that's part of I'm not going to say your identity, but, you know, like your aura, you know, a, a deep part of who you are is your your sexuality. And it's not something that you weaponize or something that you use to control others. It's just naturally something that's part of you. Um, maybe even unknowingly, and that's what makes it even more powerful um, to this person. Okay, it, it, it's that duality that's operating there that it's kind of, it's unconscious and, and they love that. So that's how they see you. They, I see that the bride's little um, crown of flowers there. So they may see you as someone that they could settle down with. Certainly, master number 22 is about mastering your intimate relationships so they may see, they may have learned a lot of lessons about life, love, and relationships um, from you. All right. So let's see their energy generally. <clears throat> or they may be learning overall right now lessons about life, love, and relationships. And maybe you are one of their teachers. Okay. All right. Energy generally. We have the remembrance, right? So through you, through the lessons that they're learning with you, we have card number 55, which is all about our spiritual lessons. Through the lessons that they're learning with you, they are remembering who they are. Look at the eyes. The eyes are blue. Okay, so they're downloading a lot of truth, um, downloading a lot of wisdom. There's hair that's growing from the third eye. And hair is about wisdom. So it's not just wisdom about this 3D world, but also spiritual wisdom they are downloading from this experience, these encounters um, with you. They're remembering that they are a spirit and spirits do spiritual things, right? So they're limitless. And then we have the lady of the song. So that feels almost like a siren energy, right? Um, so I feel they are magnetized towards you at this time, okay? Um, we have your card number 42, which reduces to six, which is the lovers. So they may see you as their divine counterpart, um, their lover. But as I told, as I told you, there, there's something about you that draws this person in. <coughs> <coughs> draws this person in uh, and it it's that mix of innocence and freak <laughs> oh my word okay let's look specifically at their energy towards you and the way that this guy is looking at this uh, maiden here um, he may, this person may be remembering um, past life encounters with you. They may be getting dreams or visions of past life encounters with you. So that's part of the remembrance. Remembering that you are the one. You are the counterpart. All right. Energy towards you. We have the sword. So they are seeing the truth and uh, and because we're seeing the Oribus here um it as i told you before they may be getting visions about all your lives together all your lives together 
and perhaps the repetitive cycles that you guys have been in for quite some time. Okay, they're seeing the truth of that. Or they may be seeing the truth of their own karmic cycles and the 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 mistakes. Well, I don't call them mistakes. Let's keep calling them cycles. The cycles that they have bind, bound themselves to over and over and over, chasing their tail. You know, just like a dog chasing their tail, not going anywhere, right? Um, meaningless exercise. So because they can see the truth of that now, they are now able to move forward. We have the chariot twice with the 77, right? So it's moving on from karmic cycles. <clears throat> the energy to once here. We have service, okay? So this, and this is someone brushing someone's hair. Um, and it's an, another number 22, okay? So again, mastering your intimate relationships. And part of this person's love language, or maybe their primary love language, might be acts of service. So this person wants to show you how much they care about you by being there for you and doing things for you. Um, maybe they have a problem with verbalizing how they feel, but taking care of people, okay, especially like hands-on things, is how this person shows how they feel. Because even on this, as this person blushes, this per even as this person brushes this person's hair, they're blushing. So this is an act of love for this person. So this person, this is how even though you may not have heard them verbalize I love you if they're always reaching out and asking what they can do for you or if you need anything anything like that this is them showing their love that's that's how they show their love and that's how they want to show their love okay maybe that's how they feel safe showing their love but they want to be of service okay they want to be of service all right so Seven people are in their air about you. Let's see person number one. Now, this is Magic, magic Calabash, just in case you've never seen any of my readings. And with Magic Calabash, there are several pieces of paper that are folded together. And on it, it's archetypes, names like, you know, mother, dad, whatever it is. Okay. And we're just going to give it a nice little swirl. I think this week I'll add some more to it. Some more names are coming to me. And we'll see. Let's go to deep beneath. So I won't see. <clears throat> and let's see the first person that's in the air about you. All right. The first person is a brother. If they don't have siblings, this is someone who is like a brother to them. Maybe they may have had encounters with um priests or monks maybe they went to school um with priests or monks so there might be someone that they're close to but this is someone who's like a brother to them <clears throat> i just got up so my voice might be a little more husky than usual So let's look at this person's energy because that's going to help us. Knowing who they are, it's going to help us interpret the cards that come out. Who is this person? We have someone, discrimination. Now, this discrimination card could be someone who is begot, be, begotted or, or prejudiced, okay? But it could also be someone who is discerning. They're able to discriminate <clears throat> between what is good for them, what's not, um, and people's true intentions, that kind of thing. They're perceptive. All right? Let's see the energy generally. We have exaltation. So, this you see this person? They are the life of the party, Right? They're very exuberant, very outgoing. Um, you know, it, it's it's 
a kind of main character kind of vibes where everywhere they go, they are the star of the show, <laughs> right? Um, but this is someone that knows how to enjoy life. And this exaltation card is also a card for like Ace of Pentacles in my in my mind. So it is someone who is stable, financially stable. Yeah, they maybe know how to party, but this is someone that has their stuff together in the material world anyways. The energy towards you. We have romance. So this person sees you and this is a card number two. This is a card number two. So master number 22 is very important to both of you guys at this time. Your, pers your person has told them, it looks like, about their feelings for you. Or they may have heard about your interaction. Maybe your person's told them stories about you. Or maybe they've seen you guys um, interact with each other. And they think that you guys are a couple. That you guys suit each other. Right? That you guys are in love. Maybe they've never seen your person act like this. Maybe that is something new. <clears throat> Maybe they see that your person is, is completely taken with you. But either way, they see this as the romance of a lifetime. All right, now let's see. What are they telling your person about you? Is that advice? Are they agreeing <clears throat> and supporting? Underneath the deck, we have the Four of Swords healing. Maybe this person is seeing the growth and the healing that your person has undergone since they met you. And maybe this is why they're drawing these conclusions. Okay. We have the Nine of Swords. We have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. And both of these cards are cards of the neurotic or someone who might be either paranoid or depressed. We have oppression in reverse, and that's the devil in reverse. And we have the Knight of Swords. It looks like your person might be going through a tough time right now. And I think that is why they're able to gauge how your person feels about you. They're seeing that your person might have been depressed. Okay. And your person might be um, kind of paranoid right now. Maybe they think that you're with somebody else or they're thinking the worst and maybe sabotaging the connection. And it's because of that and it's because they've never seen your person act like that. That's how they've realized the depth of your person's feelings for you. So what is the advice that they are giving? They're telling your person um, if that is how you really feel that you need to take this leap of faith because you're going to always wonder what it's like to be with pal three if we don't if we don't take this leap of faith so there's somebody about to jump into this portal this this positive portal of abundance here okay so they're telling your person take that leap of faith leave everything that is not honoring you that is oppressing you behind now this is a devil in reverse when the devil is upright it represents our addictions it represents the things that we are attached to that aren't for our highest good. So, you know, toxic relationships, dysfunctional family members, um, a hostile job, a hostile work environment, okay, substance abuse, um, anything that makes us disconnect for, from our truer self, this is what the devil is all about. So they're telling your person, leave the devil behind. Take the leap into this new life 
with pile three because obviously what you're doing right now isn't making you happy and quite frankly might be sending you a bit mad that's what they're telling your person okay all right let's give it another swirl and let's go at the bottom again let's see who this is All right, we have side piece. Now, pile number three, you can watch pile two. Let me put that little note so I can remind you guys. Of course, because I want to find my pen, I cannot find my pen. Oh, there it is. So pile three, watch pile two, vice versa. I think part one, which is part two, but right. So we have a side piece. So there might be somebody else attached to your connection. Okay. Um that's 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 what's coming through. That there's somebody else. Maybe there's it's somebody that you don't know about, and maybe it's some somebody that you do know about. But they are attached to your person L looks like them and your person have some sort of relationship whether it's a very casual one or a very committed one let's see this person's energy generally this person is a strategist okay um they are used to getting what they want okay they see life as a game of chess um, and they think that they are a master player. Um, and they, they're used to manipulating people using, it looks like a feminine energy. And by feminine energy, we're not talking about the body, right? We're talking about the energy. Okay. Um, and they want to keep this tower or this relationship that they've built with your person intact. So they're trying to figure out the best way to get what they want. They're always trying to figure out the best way to get what they want because it feels like this person can't speak directly about their needs and how they want their needs to be met. So what they do is manipulate others. Okay. All right. Ooh. Let's see the energy towards you. We have restless. When it comes to you, they don't know what to do. <laughs> They know what to do about everybody else. But when it comes to you, they don't know what to do here. So it feels a feeling like a kind of desperate energy with this restless card. Like they might try just about anything. Um, at this time, there is a wand in their hand. There is a pentacle in front. So they don't even know. So they don't even know if they need to do a 5D intervention or a 3D intervention or if they might do both. But right now, they, you have their full attention. You have their full attention. And they're trying to figure out how do they address this situation with you, this threat um, that you pose. What are they telling your person about you? We have the Empress in reverse. And that's the distorted feminine. They're codependent. They're clingy. They don't like themselves. And there's nothing they won't do um, to make sure that they aren't living life alone. We have the nine of wands. We have the four of pentacles. And we have the three of swords in reverse. They tell your person they have to get rid of you. <laughs> they have to get rid of you. This town is big enough for the both of us, right? So they, they, they tell your person they have to get rid of you. Three of swords in reverse is released to the third party. They view you as a third party and they're telling your person to get rid of you. Okay? And they're letting your person know that I ain't let you, I'm not letting you go. Four of pentacles is I'm not letting you go. If nobody can, if I can't have you, nobody can. That kind of crazy ass psycho energy. 
That is exactly what they're telling your person. I'm not letting you go. This person needs to be the one that that leaves. I'm standing in my power and I'm putting my foot on this. Foot, my, I'm putting my foot down on this. This is a hill that I'm going to die on. And they're telling your person, even though their ass is cray-cray, they are telling your person that you are the cray cray one, that you are the cra- that you are the crazy one, that you are the one that is codependent, clingy, can't live without them. You are the one that's manipulating them. That's what they're telling your person. So everything that they are doing, they are projecting it, projecting it onto you, and telling your person that is you, not them. So they've given a person an ultimatum. It's either they address the problem, <laughs> which is you, or um, they just might take, because Nine of Wands is about taking matters into your own hands, almost like a vigilante justice vibe, or they will take matters into their own hands. That's, that's what they're telling a person. Okay. <laughs> Let's see who else is in the air about you. Let's go underneath here. Who is that? Okay. We have a male ancestor coming through. Generations 1 to 4. So generations 1 to 4 is going to be from the person's father right back to great great grandfather. Right, to great grandfather, great great grandfather, yeah, because father, grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather, yeah. So from it could be any one of these ancestors, from their father to their great great grandfather, and what does this male ancestor, um, want to say? All right, let's see their energy generally. We have intuition, right? So very perceptive. Um, I think this person has probably already passed on. Okay. Um, so they have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. Now, not every ancestor is a wise ancestor, right? But this one looks like they're a wise ancestor. And they might even be directing and guiding your person's spiritual path and awakening and transformation at this time. We have the snake here. And there are stars on it. Starfish on it. Right? So this is about transformation. It's about shedding your skin. Shedding the things that don't serve you. Right? And even though the lotus here still has to open. It looks like your this ancestor is in charge of the awakening process for your person. And possibly um, for you. Their energy towards you. We have secrets. Okay. So I feel like they are working behind the scenes on your spiritual journey um, as well. Okay. We have a lot of butter, little butterflies here. We have a compass. Okay. So I feel like they are in charge of your spiritual journey. As well, they are also directing that. Let me see what this is. And we have submission. And it feels like one of the ways that they have been directing this journey is um, bringing some of those spiritual lessons that you have had. Spiritual lessons or karmic cycles that you've had to free yourself from. Okay. We have a card number 12, which is a higher perspective. So through um, this adversity that may have been thrown into your path, you have brought, you have downloaded a lot of enlightenment. And it looks like this ancestor is the one that's working behind the scenes um, and directing these soul lessons. So you are their protege too. What are they telling a person? Whether it's in the dream state, um, clairaudiently. 
through message, through numbers. What are they telling a person? We have the page of wands in reverse. We have the three of wands in reverse. We have perspective and it is the hangman. And we have the five of cups in reverse. So what are they telling your person? They're telling your person that they know that they are frustrated. We have the three of wands in reverse. Three of wands upright usually means a card of being patient and waiting. But when it's in reverse, we're impatient and we're frustrated with our situation because we don't know what to do, but we know that we have to take action. So they're telling your person that they know that they are frustrated, but now is not the time to reach out. Now is the time to focus on their enlightenment journey and to deal with their outstanding issues, okay? Because if they don't deal with their outstanding issues, then they run the risk of going back into the same karmic cycles that they were in previously. So as much as your person just wants to come running towards you, this ancestor is telling your person to prioritize their growth, their learning, and their transformation at this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I will do the other four persons in the extended. We're going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you and the next actions towards you. But if you're not able to come to the extended, let's get some advice from Spirit, okay? And can I ask you to please subscribe to the channel? And leave a emoji, a comment down below. You can put the date that you watched this pick a card reading and maybe the pile that you chose. That's always um, an interesting thing to do. And it serves you and serves me. Okay. Um, if you're able to go to the extended, would appreciate that as an energy exchange as well. Or if you're able to like, share the video, interact with any of the ads um, that play during this video. You know, one click can do so much for the channel. All right. It says here, don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do. For it is only in being true to yourself that you are true to others. So, supposing you are also being, in, being forced to make decisions at this time. Okay. Um, and Spirit said, this is another time to log into the headspace. When we're making that decision, this is a time to log into our heart space because our heart is our true self and make decisions that one, prioritize loving ourselves and then two, can prioritize or yeah, prioritize loving other people, right? So make sure you're loving yourself with whatever decision you're making, right? With beautiful boundaries, okay? And healthy decisions. And then we can think about other persons and other person's feelings, Okay. Let's see, what is the advice for you at this time? And this is the image. And it says, it's important right now to step back and spend some time alone, which is the exact same advice that they get from the ancestor. Instead of placing your focus on another, now's the time to give to yourself. And it's the very same advice that your person got. Right now, it's time to really nurture yourself, honor yourself, figure out what you want out of life. Not what is available to you right now, what you want. What you want. So that spirit can bring it to you. You don't have to settle for any of the options that you have right now. Focus on what you want. And then see it magically manifest itself. Okay, I'm um, so that was your reading. I hope that was helpful.